Hey, this is Glendon, and in today's video, I will teach you how to start a business with $1,000 to $5,000. If you got a little scratch and you got a niche to start a business, this is the video for you. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. Go ahead and do yourself a solid favor. Get those free 19 business courses, first link below. Check it out. The first step to starting a business for $1,000 to $5,000 is to audit yourself. That's something that many people overlook. Now, what is auditing yourself? Looking at your strengths. You want to operate from a position of strength versus scaling up, learning something new when you don't have to. If you're a person that's devoid of any strengths or personal attributes, okay, you'll have to learn. Maybe you're young, maybe you don't have a lot of perspective, but if you have skill sets, look at how you can use your current skill sets to make you current cash. Many people overlook this because it's not sexy. Case in point, on my show, The Hustlers Kung Fu Show, call in and ask Lyndon, someone who owned an agency, well, they were an independent contractor for an agency. They didn't want to do that. But I did some research and people who owned agencies were doing seven to eight figures. Then I said, look, that's where your money is. They didn't want to do it. Now, let's just say you don't want to do your strength. You don't want to mess around with that anymore. Do this. Set it up. Build a business because it's going to be much quicker. Then hire someone to run it while you go off and do whatever you want to do. The second thing that you want to do is draw up a dream list. Now, if you want a big ass house, put it on the list. If you want a nice ass car, put it on the list. If you want a college education for your kids, put it on the list. If you want two, three, four, five, six million dollars for your retirement, put it on the list. Now, why are you creating this list? Because it's fun. This is one of the things that a lot of business owners don't do, which is reward themselves with a purpose for the future. Everyone's like, I'm trying to get rich. I'm trying to get paid, but there's nothing specific. There's no big want. There's no big ask. They're just like, Hey, give me some money so I can be a boss. That's bullshit. And it's not going to get you very far, but saying, Hey, in 10 years, I want to own a $10 million company. That's very specific, that's very concrete, and that's very doable. The next thing you want to do is have solid expectations. Now, what are solid expectations? Typically, it takes two to five years for a business to get off the ground, for it to really, really scale. And many people are just like, hey, I don't want to wait that long. They're like J.G. Wentworth, I want my success now. It doesn't work like that, playboy. It doesn't. This is what you do. You sit down after you've made your dream list and then you ask yourself, what are you going to be doing for the next 10 years? Now, there are many people that go with the romantic notion of, well, what comes is what comes. Serendipity, the road of we don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Uh, that type of stuff doesn't get you where you want to be. Now, let's just say you are 25 and in 10 years, you'll be 35. Ask yourself each day, are you doing something that's going to create a life that you want to live at 35? Now, this is where you're going to have to put on your big boy pants and your big girl panties. You have to make a decision. You have to have some firm expectations. When, when people say this, people like freak out. Well, I just want to do what I want to do, which is cool. But if you end up so far from where you want to be, if you end up living a life you can't stand, who do you have to blame but yourself? Now, realistic expectations are it's going to take me two to five years to get this business rolling. Realistic expectations is while I'm working this business, perhaps as a side hustle, I'm going to have to maintain a full time job. Realistic expectations are create a hustle or some or a collection of hustles while I work on this thing and all the money that this business creates must go back into the business, which means I must keep my job that would be in you since I don't have a job for however long it takes to the point that 
The job is costing me money from my business. At that point and that point only is when you quit. These are realistic expectations. These are very cold. These are very clinical. These are very real. And I'm, I'm being somewhat, somewhat of an ass. No, I'm not being, I am being an ass is I want you to get it because currently a few years ago, I did this course called 30 days to 2,500 and the people who stuck with it are now getting traction and it's been two years going into the third year. So understand, clear your mind. You cannot live the dream and chase the dream at the same time. The next thing you want to do is research your ass off. I saw a quote from someone today and not to start controversy. I actually did some research because someone who's not really in quote this business made a statement about this business because I know my business. I was able to go, no, that's not correct. That's not going to fly. And this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason, because what I did was I went out and I audited the information, took me five minutes. I saw what was going on and I said, that dog doesn't hunt. You have got to know your industry like that to make money. Now, part of researching your ass off, because as you see how we're going down this chain of things you must do, once you go ahead and research your ass off, know what you're talking about. And this is something that many people don't do. I'm getting ready to start another business. And what I've been doing all year long is researching everyone that does this new business. And I'm finding out that there are many people who are getting paid major bank. Don't know what the hell they're talking about. Seriously, because there are simple strategies, simple techniques that they can do to improve their own platform that they're not doing, which tells me the market is wide open for what I want to do. That is the power of research. I've already made money with this new business haphazardly when people called me and said, hey, could you help me with X, Y, and Z? So I jumped into it. Now, let's say you're going to start selling pocket watches. No, let's say you're going to start selling high-end watches. What's the first thing that you do? You go online and you scope out everybody who sells high-end watches. You look at their website, then you use internet tools to see how much traffic they get. Then the sites that are getting more traffic, then you audit those sites. Then you go and like, are they getting paid traffic or is this organic traffic? Is this social media? You need to know all of that because these are the people you will be competing against if you get into the high-end watch market. So it just makes sense that you know what they're doing. And there's some people's like, well, I'm just not competing with anybody. I'm doing my own thing. And you're damn stupid because I'll give you an example. In 2009, when I first started this channel, I had my first product was the storage auction book. I went on that line following my own advice and saw there wasn't that many storage auction books on Amazon. There was a handful and I saw the information. I actually bought the books, read them and went, <laughs> these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. And I was like, rub my little hands together, start working on my book. And within 14 months, I made $62,000 from scratch new business and the product had issues but because of my research because of my hustle i was able to do some things that these people who had wrote these other books and it wasn't that their information was bad it just wasn't as full as it should be researching your market whatever you want to sell whatever service you want to have is super critical in you making money today let's talk about the money playboy in the beginning of the video or the title, how to start a business with $1,000 to $5,000. Now, as I go through these steps, notice I haven't talked about the money. This is why. Unless you do the research, unless you really take the time to learn the market, I don't care if you had a million dollars. I don't care if you had 20 million. I don't care if you had 100 million, you will fail. There was this company I think it was Sidecar, Hubcar. It was a British cab company that brought their car concept to the U.S. and they spent $100 million developing this and it failed because Uber, which did their research, which said, you can't compete. <laughs> Spanked that ass and sent them back to Britain. Now, what you're going to do with your money, and this is going to sound really crazy, you're going to take 
90% of it and put it back in the bank and you're going to operate on 10% and you're going to forget that you have that other 90%. You're not going to touch that money unless you absolutely have to. It's just, it's got to be put it this way. And it's going to sound very cumbersome, but this is what I want you to do. You have it where you actually have to get in your car, go to the bank and withdraw that money when the bank is open. That's what you have to do to be successful. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but if you do that, you got to get in your car. You got to drive. You got to go to the bank. You got to think about this. You got to ponder. You just can't go to the ATM, pull it out or put it up, put it on the debit card or write a check. You actually have to think about withdrawing that money and you have to have a firm and solid policy. Now, if you ask yourself, do I absolutely have to spend this money to start this business or get income for this business? You're going to be so far ahead of everyone else who's just coming to the table with bam, I got bank. Let's do this. No market research, no customer research, no feedback, no personal audit. And then wondering why that business sucks ass and failed. All right, game time. You've done your market research and let me be really clear. Do not go to the next step without researching your market. Don't do it. Okay. Make a promise to yourself. I'm just a guy on the internet, but make a promise to yourself that you will not go to this step until you do your research until you know your marketplace until you know your competitors. Okay. Pinky swear, pinky swear. All right. Now you got your information. You got your research. You got your money in the bank. You pulled your 10% out. Now you're going to craft a plan and you're going to execute within a week. Now for some businesses, this is not possible because maybe you have to get a website or some other things. So whatever you can execute, you will. Let's say your business needs a website, right? Let's say you need a payment processor. Okay. And you got all this idea. You have all these ideas for all these designs. This is what you do. You go to, I'll put a link below to a host that I recommend that I like. Then you go to that host, sign up, buy a domain name. Do not worry if it's your final domain name. This is a testing page. It's something I've done recently and it works. Just set it up. Use a plain WordPress profile. That's it. It's not fancy. You need a checkout button, opt in page. That's it. Then you go out to strangers and then, you, you know, with research, you'll know how to talk to people. And you say, look, I've got this product, right? And I'm in the beginning stages. The product is going to cost $2,000. But since we're in the beginning stages, I'm going to make you a deal. If you buy 30 days early, you can get in for a hundred dollars. Facebook friends. Yeah. Now I know you're going like, whoo, yo, Glendon, that's kind of scary. Business is scary. Know that. Now, if you can't do that, there's a few things wrong. You didn't do your market research. You're not sure of your product. You don't like your product. You don't think it's going to work because if you did this stuff and you knew it and you knew it was a good idea, like, let's look at it this way. You've got some good news for your friend, Johnny. And you're like, I mean, it's great news, right? It's awesome news. It's amazing news, right? And you're like, Johnny, 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 you will not believe what I got for you. And Johnny's like, what you got? Well, it's this, this, this. Word, word. You must have that kind of energy and enthusiasm to sell your product. If you don't have that kind of energy and enthusiasm, you probably don't need to be selling the damn thing straight up. So that's your mission. Create a quick plan, one page. It doesn't have to be 15 pages. It doesn't have to be 20 pages. This does not apply to every business. So for anyone that leaves those comments, listen to the video. Then execute and execute hard. Execute like a motherfucker. And you know motherfuckers execute hard. All right. Now you're at the day of... It's the day. It's the day. It is the day that you start your business. No, you didn't, until you sell something, you haven't started your business. Okay. And what you're going to do, you got your product, you got your service, you, you're out there in the marketplace, you're slaying dragons, you're doing what you need to do. When you sell your product, get your customer's phone number. 
forget email, you know, if it's part of the process, get their email, but be sure to get their phone number and say this. Thanks for the purchase. Do you mind if I call you in a week or so after you use the product just to get some feedback? Most likely they'll say sure. And if they're kind of hesitant, say, I'll give you a $5 coupon or something appropriate in that area. People will definitely go for that. Now, this is the juicy part. It's a week later, right? You call them up and they're like, hey, are you enjoying the product? What's going on with this? What's going on with that? And you get that feedback. It's very, very important that you make these phone calls. It's very important because I know it's going to sound like, hey, that's grunt work. But the reality is you made the sale, you make the phone call. The reason is you're going to get so much information that you would not get if you hired someone to do it. You'll get the nuance of their phone, of their voice. It just, it just do it. It'll be worth it. Now, you're at the point where you can now draw up your business plan. See how that goes? Because most business plans are like Moby Dick, great works of fiction, full of assumptions. But see, you, you did your research, you, you, got, you executed, you've got the money in the bank, you're ready to really write down a business plan. Why? Because you have in the field experience. You know what's going on, you talk to the people, you looked at the product, you know everything there is to know about what your product is at this point. Now you could take that information and draft a 30 day business plan. See, we just went ahead and got this thing executed within a week. Now we're going to do a 30 day business plan. And at the end of 30 days, you're going to reevaluate, wash, rinse and repeat. And that's how you start a business with one to $5,000. Now, there are some people who are looking for me to tell them exactly what to sell or exactly what market to get into. Now, for you people, you're being terribly short-sighted, and this is why. Remember how I said that I'm starting a new business? If I was on the outside looking in and listening to other people, I wouldn't know what was going on. I was like, well, that sounds good. Everybody says this is hot. But see, I went ahead and I researched people that I'll be competing against. I researched people who have stuff out there and I learned that a lot of them don't know what the hell they're talking about because they don't do it at this level. Let's see, I'm in the fire. I'm out here with the dragons. I'm out here with the zombies. I got my gun. I'm, I'm out here. I'm in the war. I know, you know, when, when they go back in HQ and they're like, hey, what's happening? It's like, well, zombie one through eight are down because we hit them with, with the nuke. Or the, the six dragons, yeah, we got the eggs. We did all that because we're out here. You have to be at the point of contact or it's like my uncle used to like to say, where the rubber meets the road. This is where you get rich. Let me say that again. This is where you get rich because when you do this kind of research, in this kind of execution, you'll find out that many of your competitors don't know things that you know. Do it. So that's it. And be sure to subscribe and be sure to like this video and be sure if you have a business question, not a I want to start a business question. Once again, I got 19 free courses, links below, handle all that stuff. It's free. And if you want to donate something, if you find value in the YouTube channel and if you find value in the courses, all that stuff is on the page when you sign up. So that's pretty much my story and I'm sticking to it. This ends this episode of the Hustlers Kung Fu Show. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. If you have a question about business, hit me up here on Anchor. It's super simple, super easy. Just respond to this message and I'll answer your question. Glendon Cameron. In this video, I'll tell you how to start a business for $1,000 to $5,000. That's right. It's a little different. If you're looking to start a business with no money down, check out my other video. With that, let's get into the show.